Welcome to the booster seat and seatbelt video. We are going to start with the booster seat and then transition to the seatbelt use later in the video. In this portion of the video, we are going to cover the topics of direction, location, installation, and use. If you would like to know more about how to properly select a car seat, please watch the selection video after this. These are booster seats. This type of seat is typically used for children who have outgrown the weight and height limits of their forward-facing harness seat. There are typically two main types of booster seats, low back seats, also known as no back or backless boosters, and high back boosters, which can be a part of a three-in-one seat, a combination seat, or a booster seat that can transition to a no back. Booster seats have higher weight and height limits than other car seats to last until the child can properly fit into a seatbelt alone. Most children won't be able to get a good seatbelt fit until they're about 57 inches tall, the average height of an 11 year old. The advantage to a booster seat is that it will boost the child up so the seatbelt fits in all the right places. It also helps so kids don't slouch to get their knees to bend over the edge of the vehicle seat. Slouching puts the lap belt up onto the child's soft belly and puts them at risk for injury in a crash. The last thing booster seats do is to get the kids in the best position for the side impact airbags to protect them from hitting the door. To find the weight and height limits, direct your attention to the owner's manual that came with the seat. It will also be your guide to specifics about your car seat. Most often on the side of the car seat, there will be stickers which will show installation and height and weight limitations. A booster seat should be facing the windshield of the car. A booster seat should be placed in the second or third row of the vehicle and never in the front seat in front of an active airbag. Typically, the booster seat fits best in the outer positions behind the passenger or driver. If you do need to put the booster seat in the front seat, make sure the vehicle seat is moved back as far as possible. This helps protect the child from the impact of the dashboard airbag in a crash. Remember, as previously stated in the video, to always refer back to your car seat manual for specifics about your car and its installation. The installation of a booster seat is relatively simple. Place the booster seat on the vehicle seat. Some booster seats will have you continue to use the top tether as added protection. Making sure the seatbelt is in position over your child's collarbone and hips is the main goal with a booster seat. Shoulder cushioning and aftermarket headrests aren't tested or approved for use with booster seats or seatbelts. Measure the seatbelt guide on a high back booster or the string with the red hook on a no back booster to make sure it is at or above your child's shoulders to ensure that the belt rests across the collarbone, not touching the child's face or neck, or is not coming off the side of the shoulder. Place the shoulder belt through the belt guide flat with no twists or folds. As you can see in the video, Kat is taking the seatbelt and routing it over the armrest and buckling it in. Then she adjusts the seatbelt so it's under both armrests and it's snug fitting on her. Sometimes a child will route the seatbelt over the armrest and buckle it in first. If this is what comes naturally to them, let them continue. However, be sure to adjust the lap and shoulder parts of the seatbelt under the armrest after it is buckled. Make sure to buckle the seatbelt in when it's not in use, as it can become a projectile in the event of a sudden stop. Next, we will talk about transitioning to a seatbelt. We've made it to the last step, the seatbelt. We're going to cover the topics of location and the seatbelt fit test today. Passengers are safest when they are sitting in the second or third row of the vehicle. We encourage your child to sit in the back seat for as long as possible, or at least until the age of 13. This is because the back seat is further away from the point of impact for the most common type of crash, a head-on collision. The back seat is also safer because they don't have the adult bone or muscle maturity yet. There's an easy test that you can do to ensure your child is truly ready to go without a booster seat. Because each car model has different seats, it is best to check the five-step fit test every time they are in a new car 
or seat location. Step one, keep their lower back against the vehicle seat and sitting upright. Step two, bend their knees over the edge of the seat with their feet flat on the vehicle floor. Step three, have the shoulder belt stay across their collarbone, never touching the child's face or neck, or have it behind them or off their shoulder. Step four, have the lap belt stay on their upper thighs across their hip bones. And step five, that they can stay like this for the entire ride. If you have any questions or concerns about your car seat or your child's fit test, please contact a child passenger safety technician here at Lurie Children's by calling 312-227-4711 or our Outpatient Buckle Up program by calling 312-227-7081 for more help. Thanks for watching.